These are my favorite dog booties, and today I'm going to share with you all of the reasons why. here are from dogbooties.com. They're a very budget-friendly dog booty. They only cost three dollars per booty. Um, so you can mix and match, match sizes. You can mix and match um, kind of densities, how thick they are. You can easily buy a spare. Um, for just three dollars a booty, it's easy to have several on hand. And why do I love these dog booties? Well, there's several reasons. So one is that they're really easy to get on, compared to Glia's Mutlux or other dog booties that we have, which we like. Um, but these are just easier to get on. So lots of times when I hike with Glia in the winter, I predominantly use booties in the winter with my dog. Um, when we hike in winter, I'll wait for her to get a, a frozen kind of paw. So she'll hike for a while, and then she'll hit a point where she just gets too cold. And she'll lift that paw and let me put on a booty as kind of a signal to start putting on those dog boots. And so oftentimes I'm out in the backcountry, I am cold, so I'm going to end up taking off my mittens, trying to put the dog boots on. These go on quick and easy. They minimize how much hassle and time we have to stop on the trail, and they keep my hands warmer because I can put my hands back in my mittens a little bit faster. They also stay on, the best of any dog booty that I've had. So again, the Mutlux are the other ones that we have purchased, and they are warmer than these dog booties, and they work really well, but we have to be careful in deep snow because they fall off a little bit easier. We've also made some homemade booties that were similar in style to these dog booties, um, but they did not stay on quite as well, and there's a few reasons that these stay on well. One is that the manufacturer designs it so there's a little bit of a taper to a toe and that creates less fabric sitting around the toe of the dog so there's less fabric to trip over. Um, additionally, they use this, uh, it's a vel stretch, Velcro, um, and so essentially this part that Velcro shut, it's stretchy. I don't know if you can see that in the video or not, but it is stretchy. And so when you go to fasten it around your dog's ankle, it's easy to pull it a little bit tight so that you can get a nice, good fit um, and limit the chance of the dog booty coming off. And when I put these dog booties on, I'll demonstrate them here for you. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna slide Glia's paw into the dog boot, and you can see that it goes on fairly well. I did catch a toenail a little bit, so I'll readjust here. Um, but it goes on nice and easy. I Velcro it around, and you can see how nice and secure these are. They're not likely to fall off. Glia obviously doesn't like wearing the dog booties in the house, so you'll see she won't put her paw back down right away. If we were outside, she would get right back to hiking, no problems. She just doesn't like wearing these if she doesn't have to. Um, so they stay on really, really nicely. We haven't lost a single one on the trail yet. Um, we've had a couple fall off on the trail. They've been nice and bright, so I've been able to find them easily. Um, and most of the time when they fall off, it's because I didn't secure it well enough around her um, kind of ankle or, or wrist area there, right? Um, and so we've just tightened them a little bit, put them back on, and we've been good to go. The other thing is that I did purchase two sizes of these dog booties. And so you'll see that this one, this pink one here, this is their heavier duty dog booty. It's in the thousand denier. Um, and so I purchased it a little bit bigger because I didn't think it would, I thought it would be stiffer, harder to get on. And as a result, it's a little bit too large for Glia's paw. And so this one does fall off a little bit more than, than the other two. But these two that are sized correctly for her stay on really, really well. Speaking of sizing, the sizing for these is a little bit different than some of the other dog boots that I've reviewed already. So like the Mutlux that we talked about last week, um, those ones were measured from the back of the paw to the front toenails. Um, these ones are measured from side to side. So here I'll show you, I, I end up putting Glia on a piece of paper and I will have her stand with her weight on that paw. Once I have that, I'll mark to either side of her paw and then let her get off of that piece of paper. Then I'll go ahead and I'll take a ruler of any sort to measure from one side of her foot to the other. 
And you'll see that for Glia, her width is about two and a quarter inches. And as a result, that means she kind of falls in the middle of their sizing. So for dogbeauties.com, their extra small size goes up to two and a quarter. And then the next size up is the small. And so when I purchased these dog booties, I got the 1,000 denier in the small, and I got a 500 and a 330 in the extra small. The really nice thing about the dog booties is they color code them, so if you forget what size you bought, you can check. So you can see that these two here, and I'm just gonna unvelcro this, these two are yellow fasteners there. And then this one, um, which is a small, is a pink fastener. And so they're all color coded, all the sizes have a different color, and so when you go to reorder, you can easily look and see what size you wanna purchase for your dog. Um, and again, with Leah's foot being on the border, it was a better bet to stay in the size that she was really kind of closer to. You stay on a lot better in the extra small than it does in the small. And so when I reorder these, I'm gonna definitely be going for all extra small for Glia's foot or paw. Um, the other thing that you'll wanna decide when you purchase dog booties is how thick you want the material to be. So I've already briefly mentioned that there's 1,000, 500, and 330 denier. Um, and essentially the 1,000 and the 500 are both a uh, nylon, a coated nylon material. The 1,000 is fairly water resistant. Um, this one does really good on slushy, sloppy trails. So lots of times when we hike here in Minnesota, um, we'll hike through half melting snow. Um, and if we're crossing roads with salt or things like that, Glia might still need a booty on. These keep the water out a lot better than the other two sizes. The 500 is kind of a middle ground where it's a little bit water resistant, a little bit thicker and a little bit better um, as far as durability and how it does on abrasive surfaces. So if we're going to be hiking on a combination of snow and rocks and things together, this one does a fairly good job and it's probably my favorite of the three. A um, little bit water resistant, a little bit more durable, but not quite as thick. Um, as the 1000 and for Glia when she wears them she prefers the thinner fabric it's a little bit more natural on her paws so this is a nice compromise in the middle and then finally we have the 330 um, and the 330 is what the dogbooties.com recommends as their number one seller but it's best for like frozen snow conditions where things aren't wet at all um, and it's also not as durable because it's thinner, and so it does better on snow than it does on rocky surfaces or combination surfaces. Um, if we wear this one in the slush, Glia's paws will get wet, uh, but again, it is really lightweight um, and easy for Glia to wear. And I did go ahead and weigh all of these dog booties to kind of sh show you how much they weigh. They're really lightweight and nice. Um, and I ended up finding that the 1,000 was about 0.3 ounces per booty. I've got the 500 at 0.2, and I've got the 330 at 0.1. So they're really lightweight, and that brings me to my other favorite thing about these dog boots. They are so lightweight and easy to carry. They come with on every backpacking trip in case Glia has a paw injury, in case we hit hot or hard surfaces that her paws aren't ready to walk across. Um, and they fit in her pack so nice and easy. Um, they fold up and go into pockets really well too. So lots of times when I hike before I got a little hip belt that I bring with, I want to stash these in pockets and I can fold them up and put them in and pull them out and there's plenty of space and room to bring four of these along. So very lightweight, very packable. If you watch my What Glee and I Bring backpacking video, you'll see that we add them there. Um, specifically, if you're going for lightweight, these 330s are great, but if you want a little bit more um, durability and a little bit more water resistance, go for these 500s, they're fantastic. So overall, I, again, these dog booties, they are my favorite dog boots. They are the ones that we are planning to reorder when they wear out. And we've had these for about a season and a half now. So we got them last winter, the winter of 2019, and they're holding up pretty well. You can see that there's a little bit of dirt on them. I need to run them through the washing machine. There's maybe a little bit of fraying up at the top of them. But again, for $3 a dog booty, next time we order, we'll just order a few extra. They are fantastic and we highly recommend them. 
All right, well, we hope that this video was helpful to you um, and that you can get your dog sized and ready to go for winter. Not all dogs need dog boots, um, but when you live up here in cold conditions, it's always a good idea to have a couple spare on hand. And if you're doing any long distance backpacking with your dog, make sure to bring a couple just in case you need an emergency to cover up a paw wound or help protect that paw. So get out there, find the best dog boot for your dog, but these are our current favorites for here in Minnesota. All right, thanks for watching and happy hiking, everyone.